With all eyes on Israel, the world waits for the response to Iran's direct missile attack. Keeping you informed and engaged, now more than ever. This is Seculo. We want to hear from you. Share and post your comments. Or call 1-800-684-3110. And now your host, Logan Seculo. This is Logan Seculo joining you for the next hour to discuss, obviously, everything that's kind of unfolded over the last few days with the attack from Iran to Israel, how Israel is going to respond. We've got a stacked show of guests coming on who are going to talk about that, including former IDF members, as well as Jeff Balaban, who runs our ACLJ office in Jerusalem. I also want to hear from you. There's a lot of calls right now from the Biden administration, from worldwide, to say, hey, we don't think Israel should respond because, you know what, they have good enough defense to take down. They did 99%, over 99% of the missiles aimed and fired, not just aimed, fired, including to the holy sites of Islam, were intercepted. And because they were intercepted, that means you did a good job. Therefore, you don't deserve to respond, even though hundreds of missiles were shot at your country. I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on that? What if this was America? What if this was over the Capitol? What if this was, look, I'm kind of a 9-11, post-9-11 conservative. So I look at this and go, that's not how we'd respond then. I don't think it's how we should respond now. I don't think it's how Israel should respond. But I want to hear from you. Maybe you think that way. Obviously, there's those feelings of World War III when you start talking about the Middle East or the end times. You're talking about the Middle East erupting. But it doesn't mean uh, that you know, I'd love to hear from you. You can have a very different opinion on this. So give me a call at 1-800-684-3110. At the same time, jury selection is happening in the Donald Trump case. We'll talk about that. And as of right now, if you are in San Francisco, maybe you're stuck in traffic. Why? Because currently, as of just at least a few minutes ago, the Golden Gate Bridge, you know, the over mile, mile and a half long modern wonder, the Golden Gate Bridge currently being blocked. Why is it being blocked? Because pro-Palestinian slash pro-Hamas activists have decided to protest and stop the probably 100,000-plus cars that travel over that bridge each and every day uh, because of you know, they're, they're going to make a big difference here in San Francisco. And look, I, as much as San Francisco gets a lot of heat, and I think they are in a mess right now, it's one of our best cities in the, in the country. I really think so. I mean, not, maybe not right now, but historically, one of the most unique places in the country to visit. Uh, and I hate what's become of it. I really do. If you go down to any of the big tourist areas, it's scary. There's threats of thieves there's threats everywhere there's all these issues and now to add upon that you have the golden gate bridge uh again one of the icons of america being overtaken and shutting down uh one of our major cities the main protest banner says stop the world for gaza so you have a lot of um you know you have you know the sentiments coming out of this this is not peaceful i mean sure we're all for peaceful protests here but when you start shutting down major roads because of your, yeah, pretty much your pro-terrorism, uh, I got a, I got some issues with that right now. Again, we're going to be joined in just a few minutes by a really special guest, uh, Amir Avivi, who is a former IDF member, but also served on a lot, currently CEO of uh, Israel's Defense and Security Forum. So we're going to have him on to discuss what happened over the weekend and what it means moving forward. Because I think a lot of people knew this was coming. How come that? I see that conversation happening a lot. We saw, we knew for days, we talked about the show on Friday, that it looked like Iran was going to make this move. And then they did. It, we, we even knew when they launched everything, hey, it's going to take a few hours to get to Israel. And, of course, Israel's Iron Dome, which, of course, a lot of our you know favorite elitists want to uh, want to, to, to take away the funding for. We don't want to support the Iron Dome, though. A lot of that technology is what we use for our own missile defense. Give us a call, one 800 Six eight four thirty one ten. We are halfway, officially halfway, in the Life and Liberty Drive for the month of April, and of course, it's Tax Day. But you know what? To give you a little relief, all donations made to the ACLJ not only are they doubled right now through matching uh, members who are ready to do this, it's also tax deductible. So we'll give you a leg up on next year. So for the first time in history, though, we saw Iran launch that massive aerial attack on the Jewish state, and in response, we're mobilizing our team in Jerusalem on Capitol Hill and Europe to defend Israel. Today we are sending a vital demand letter to the UN. I'll show it to you when we come back. The UN Secretary General calling on him to condemn Iran's attack and defend our ally. Right now, again, all donations are doubled. Go to aclj.org, but phone lines are open. I want to hear from you. 1-800-684-3110. 
dramatic escalation of violence in the region. Major breaking news over the skies of Israel. A wide-scale aerial assault is going on right now with waves and waves of drones and missiles streaming in. Iran launching a barrage of more than 300 missiles and attack drones. For the last several minutes, we've seen these flares streaking all across the skies over Jerusalem. The sound of emergency sirens piercing the air, warning people to seek shelter from the ongoing assault. It is significant because we now have multiple fronts in Mideast conflicts. This is no longer just Israel. Israel's war with Hamas in Gaza. This is now a state-on-state -state conflict with Iran itself. This is a severe and dangerous escalation. Our defensive and offensive capabilities are at the highest level of readiness. The IDF has been very clear that most of the drones and missiles were destroyed and intercepted outside Israeli airspace. One Arab-Israeli girl was critically injured in an attack in southern Israel. Iran saying that after the attack, the matter can be deemed concluded unless Israel responds with more military action. We do understand there will be an Israeli response to this attack against their territory. The question is what that response might look like and what type of coordination is currently being conducted with the American forces that are operating right now out of the Middle East. We are still on high alert because we realize that we have to retaliate. In our neighborhood, you cannot sit idly by after such aggression coming from Tehran. It will bring more attacks against Israel. So I think in the next few hours, we will have to decide how, when, and where we uh, punch back against the aggression of Iran. Israel will choose its time and place to be able to hit back, and I would expect that hit to be rather explosive. Because Biden's administration has been weak on this, I don't expect it to be immediate, but I expect it to be meaningful. Welcome back to Secula. We are taking your calls. 1-800-684-3110. Still waiting to connect uh, with the Israel Defense and Security Forum's CEO. We're hopefully going to do that uh, shortly, But in the meantime, there was also a meeting yesterday, a phone call between Benjamin Netanyahu, the head of Israel, and, of course, our president, Joe Biden, where he told, President Biden told Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu during a call on Saturday that the U.S. won't support any counterattack against Iran. Of course, they are saying, hey, I mean, Joe Biden said to Netanyahu, you got to win, take the win, talking about the fact that hundreds of rockets, hundreds of missiles, excuse me, were not only aimed, fired, and launched, but take the win because why? You have a good enough system to protect your community, to protect your country. We know, though, we saw what happened in October. Sometimes it's overtaken. This was because somehow we knew about this. The U.S. was able to also get involved, support the uh, essentially the ground control of all of these uh, missiles with the Iron Dome. Of course, you've seen all that footage where they get shot down. It's an amazing sight, but can you imagine being there? Uh, and we're going to have people on this broadcast who have been there, who have seen it, who have seen those night skies lit up with uh, the missiles and the counterattacks. It's really disturbing uh, that the U.S. would do this. How do you feel about Joe Biden's response to Benjamin Netanyahu saying, we're not going to get involved anymore. Take the win. Take the win. Take the win that your country was attacked. Even if it was unsuccessful, your country was attacked. Take the win. I want to hear from you. All this while President Trump is currently uh, dealing with jury selection in his trial. 1-800-684-3110. 1-800-684-3110. If you're watching on YouTube or Rumble, I'm encouraging you guys the most. Not only do you hit the subscribe and the thumbs up, the like, and comment. I want, well, I want to see the comments where you're coming from. I like seeing that. We have people watching in Israel all the time. I'd love to see the comments, put, put in the comments where you're coming from. But if you're watching on one of those platforms... You can also be on the air. Give us a call. Don't just hide behind your keyboard. Come on. Give me a call. 1-800-684-3110. Let's go to Robert in Maryland, who's calling on line one. We good with that? Robert, you're on the air. Yeah. Hi. How you doing, Logan? I wanted to ask good, you good the question. What is the United States uh, ex is the United States going to retaliate against the ramp for the uh, ballistic missiles and cruise missiles that were launched against Israel, also in light of the fact that uh, Iran has been attacking American troops in both uh, Syria and Iraq since October 7th of last year. Yeah, I mean, do I think they're going to? I, I Right now, I think they're playing politics with it. I, I think you have a situation where we're in a political year, we're in an election year, and they're judging everything based on will. Not is this, does this protect our country the most? Not does this protect the interest of the United States of America? 
not does it support our allies. I think it's does this affect Joe Biden becoming reelected? And that is a sad place to be in where, one, you have to make that decision, where it can't be one, therefore, the other. I want to protect the country, therefore, that will also maybe help me in my reelection. But we live in a world where you have the Golden Gate Bridge taken over right now. The Golden Gate Bridge taken over by protesters. And I don't think, don't think you can't, you don't have a room of people in the Biden administration, in the Biden, uh, let's say, the uh, re-election campaign, not sitting there going, we we can't not respond to these people. We have to be careful because those are typically our voters. And we know we've seen him slipping in some of those big states um, that have these you know, large communities of people who, again, I don't even think represent most Islamic people, but are these are the radicals that maybe support what happened in Israel and the attack uh, that killed thousands, and then now all of a sudden you have a full war. Now, do I think that an escalation is necessary? It's hard for me to argue against it when you have Iran shooting hundreds of missiles. Do I think in the best interest of America? It gets a little concerning because you do start inching towards World War Three. That does start happening. That becomes a reality that's not just a tagline or a hashtag. But we'll be in World War III before we realize we're in World War III. You know, it'll be labeled that later on. And you could even argue that we're already starting down that path. Let's go ahead and take another call. Let's go to David, who's calling in Oklahoma. Uh, hey, that means two lines are open now. 1-800-684-3110. David, go ahead. Thank you for taking my call. I appreciate it. Uh, if you were attacked and, and you had all these defense systems wouldn't you still retaliate and go after the people that are attacking you and your family? And, and why is Joe Biden flip-flopping back and forth, not wanting to help defend our closest ally? Is that an impeachable offense? I don't think it's an impeachable. Look, I think they've trivialized impeachment, so maybe everything is an impeachable offense at this point if you're a, a sitting president. I mean, as of last time around, I don't think there's these uh, defined rules anymore of what impeachable means. Uh, it used to be pretty high. You know, big crimes and misdemeanors, real big, big stuff. Now it could be, but obviously you don't have the votes for that. But I know what you're saying, which is how could you in that situation not respond? And this is what President Biden said. Biden said, I told Prime Minister Netanyahu that Israel demonstrated a remarkable capacity to defend against and defeat even unprecedented attacks, sending a clear message to its foes that they could not effectively threaten the security of Israel. Come on now. We know what that is. And that is, look, Iran is not stupid. They knew that most likely these missiles were not going to land. That Israel does have this defense uh, iron dome that it has to have, by the way, to clearly survive. There were rockets pointed at the third most uh, important Islamic place, the Dome of the Rock, right there. Of course, was the former home of what? The Jewish temple before it was destroyed. Then they built the Dome of the Rock on top of it. And Israel protects it. Why? Because Iran knew these weren't going to land. They were shooting it. I mean, much of it right now. Yeah, they're seeing it here. Oh, okay. We actually are going to go to, we only have a couple minutes here. Uh, He just connected, so I wanted to interrupt myself here. And go to Amir Avivi, who is the founder and CEO of Israel's Defense and Security Forum. Uh, I wanted to have you on this broadcast today to give people a bit of understanding. Because look, we, we went into the weekend anticipating that this attack was going to happen. I think for people who are kind of unfamiliar with maybe the, the, the war games, if you will, that Israel could be prepared and it would happen. And this is just how the escalation start to happen. But from you on the ground, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Well, yeah, Israel uh, anticipated uh, this attack. Uh, we had the intel. We knew when it was coming. And Israel, uh, you know, we have been preparing for this scenario 30 years since the early 90s, when Iraq first time attacked with ballistic missiles Israel, and we had no response. Uh, we relied on uh, basically on uh, uh, American uh, capabilities, the Patriot at the time. Since then, Israel has advanced dramatically. We have a multi-layer uh, system and capability to deal with the uh, drones, the uh, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and uh, I think it has proven itself. And of course, the coordination with the U.S., Britain, and Jordan uh, was uh, extraordinary. And we managed to really uh, deal with uh, 99% of this attack. Um, 
And uh, now we have to retaliate. There will be a response and there will be a strong response to what uh, basically Iran did. I think now there is an understanding that Iran is the main aggressor, is endangering not only Israel and the region, but also the whole globe with its aspiration to nuclear weapons. And it's something that requires a very, very strong response. I, I agree with you. I think with the, Israel has to respond. And I think it's pretty ridiculous that you have people like our president saying, you know, the, take the win. And that's what he told you know, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, take the win. The Iron Dome worked. Our, and you know, we were able to stop this. Uh, any other situation, if this was over our country, if this was over the United States of America, you could look up and see the missiles coming in and the defense, defenses having to take place. That would not be the response. But it feels like it's only because it's Israel. And when you hear something like that, take the win. Knowing that a response is really necessary, uh, how does that make you feel? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, uh, you cannot win just on defense. You have to be proactive. Uh, we saw what happened when we were not proactive in Gaza. At, at the end of the day, if you are only on defense, at a certain stage, uh, you'll be attacked, and it's usually in a surprise. We paid a heavy price for not being proactive. We are not going to do that again. We need to defend the people of Israel. Uh, we need to deal with this uh, threat. And I think that it's time that the U.S. understands that Iran is endangering the whole globe and not be willing to use power. This reflects not only on the Middle East, but globally. This is destabilizing the whole globe. This might bring China. Uh, to attack Taiwan. This uh, emboldens the Russians in the uh, Russian-Ukraine war and maybe beyond that. Yep. So in order to have uh, really stability, it requires leadership and it requires uh, really being willing to use military power against this uh, threat, against Iran. Well, I, one, I'm sorry to cut it short, but you know, we had some connection to problems earlier, but I do want to encourage everyone to check out the Israel's Defense and Security Forum. Go to the website, visit it there. Amir Avivi, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it is important to have these voices on this kind of broadcast because you need to hear when you have our own president saying, I'll oh, take the win. I think it's important for you to hear other voices uh, that are really dealing with this situation at a higher level. So thank you so much for joining us. Next segment, we're going to be going to Jeff Balaban, who is uh, going to be joining us, head of ACLJ Jerusalem, to continue this conversation. Phone lines are, there's one line open right now, so I'd love to hear from you. 1-800-684-3110. In the back half of the show, we're going to take as many calls as we can. We'll be right back. What could the U.S. do you think? Like, like I, you know, we're walking through like, to kind of deter, you know, if you, I don't, maybe you can't get specific, but basically make clear, you know, to Iran, you take these steps, uh, we're going to be standing side, beside Israel and uh, this could be the—I mean, maybe it's strong language, but uh, this could be the reason why uh, your entire Islamic Republic uh, is destroyed uh, because you because of decisions, like you said, uh, Secretary Pompeo, that they have decided to make, uh, that they have decided to take these aggressive steps and coordinate and fund Hamas to to uh, carry out the October seventh attacks at, at Hezbollah and in Syria and all these other areas where they try to destabilize uh, in the Gulf states as well and. There might be pretty widespread support uh, from those Gulf states and other other uh, major Muslim countries in that region who are also sick and tired of Iran uh, uh, supporting groups that are firing missiles into their country. Uh, I know they might not love saying it. The scope and, and nature of the responses are uh, highly varied. You can you can make them very nuanced. Uh, so we ought to be, I hope they've thought about that in the Biden administration. Um, we thought about it all the time. How is it that we restore that deterrence if it should be the case that we lose it? And then finally, uh, not only is it about the, the effort that's undertaken, call it a strike or a response or a, uh, how, how we counter, um, but what's really important is convincing the Iranian regime that the American leadership is capable and serious and competent. And when it comes to deterrence, right, Vladimir Putin rolls into Ukraine. Uh, we lose 13 Americans in Afghanistan. Now we have the catastrophe that is the Middle East. Uh, America is a lot less secure and a lot less safe when we don't have leadership in the White House and at our security agencies that are focused on merit and on deterring the bad guys from doing dangerous things to the United States of America.
Welcome back to Secular. We are going to take as many calls as we can. 1-800-684-3110 a little bit later in the broadcast. So stay on hold if you're on hold. I will get to you guys coming up later in the show. But I did want to first bring on Jeff Balaban, head of ACLJ Jerusalem, uh, who I'm sure has been monitoring and been part of what's been going on over the last few days. Jeff, on Friday, we obviously got the sort of knowledge or Thursday that this potential attack from Iran was going to happen. And before we get to you, I want to just flash back, not that long ago, back to September, back to October. Um, Jake Sullivan kind of put out there saying, hey, September of 2023, so not that long ago, said that, you know, things are going pretty well in the Middle East. Let's take a listen. The Iranian attacks against U.S. forces have stopped. Our presence in Iraq is stable. I emphasize for now because all of that can change. And the Middle East region is quieter today than it has been in two decades. We know what happened just a few weeks after that. And now, flash forward six months later, uh, here we are, Jeff, um, with unprecedented attacks from Iran. And, of course, our president saying, hey, take the win. Sure, they shot hundreds of missiles at you, but you were able to shoot them all down. So all good. They have gotten everything so colossally wrong that uh, it, it goes beyond embarrassing. It's it's terrifying, Logan, because it's not just what's happening to the Jews in Israel. And by the way, not just to the Jews in Israel, as I'm sure you know, there, there was only one casualty from this barrage of ballistic missiles, drones, rockets, and that was a young Arab Muslim girl who was injured uh, in Israel. And so there it's, it's indiscriminate bombing, shelling, trying to destroy anyone on the ground, and they don't care how many Arabs or Muslims they sacrifice, so long as they can strike a blow against the Jews. And this has been teed up by the Biden administration, and you, you're right, this is the backdrop since the beginning, but I want to make it even worse. I don't know if you saw this Jerusalem report, the Jerusalem Post report. I'm going to actually read this. Iran informed Turkey in advance of the planned operation, a Turkish diplomatic source told Reuters, and the U.S. conveyed to Iran via Ankara that its, opposi- that its operation must be within certain limits. So let's translate that from diplomatic speak. That means that our administration, the American administration, knew about and green lit the Iranian attack. They said okay, but said it has to be within certain limits, and then immediately told the Israelis, and you must not retaliate. Right. How do we translate that, Logan? What does that mean? Our administration is telling Iran it's okay to launch ballistic missiles into Israel and then immediately tells Israel you can't retaliate? In no yeah. other situation would this be the case. It's only because it's Israel. And I've been saying that on repeat, and I feel like everyone knows this already. But when you have, if, if you could just take that picture and instead of saying, you know, the old city of Jerusalem, or, or I mean, look, like you said, they don't really even care about their own people and, they, and their own historic marks. There was... You know, rocket fire over the Alaska Mosque, over the Dome of the Rock, you know, probably one of what their top two, three holy sites in the entire religion. We obviously know what the original uh, spot that was, but for even for their own people, their own religion, they were doing that because they know, yes, yeah, sure, they have an idea that Israel's probably going to not be very much affected by this. Now, literally, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, literally, when a Jew goes up to the Temple Mount, it's they're not allowed to pray there. Okay, there are Jews who try to go up, and they're not allowed to pray. And they have to go there to be escorted by police because otherwise they'll be stoned to death by the, the Muslims who are there. When a Jew goes up, the Arab world lights up with, with all these incitements and provocations saying the Jews are assaulting them literally just to go up there and, and be there to see the site of our holy temples. And yet, when they launch missiles rockets indiscriminately, they could wipe out not just the buildings but the people. You're right, Logan. No one cares. And who who stops it? Israel. Israel stops them from wiping out those those sites on the Temple Mount. Yeah. And what other administration would you have where, yeah, obviously, told you know, Prime Minister Netanyahu, it wasn't even a hey, we don't want you to escalate this, which is insane to begin with. The fact that that's, I mean, I mean, who did the escalation? But said, hey, take the win, BB, take the win. We were able to stop all this. But that doesn't affect even the people on the ground who look up in the night sky and see. You know, hundreds of rockets coming in, and yes, the response is amazing. It is a miracle. It's a miracle of God that the that the defense forces that that Iron Dome works the way it works. But we shouldn't be living this way. And if we, if this happens, just like our last guest said, it would be the same way of what happened with in Gaza and Hamas, which is eventually 
thousands of people will die because we kept our guard down and Israel did not respond in the way it should have due to really pressure from the West. By the way, I want to show you something. I want to show the audience something before we go. But, I just, but so, so I don't want to run out of time here. But quickly, General Avivi, Amir Avivi, you know, he's 100 percent right. The way I put it is when you're playing defense, then you're only negotiating by how much you're losing. The only way to win is to play offense. And this administration is standing in the way of Israel, not only playing offense, but playing enough defense, even locking down what you see what's going on in Gaza. And so this is, uh, Israel's having its hands tied. Israel, it's, and, and America, as I say, apparently they greenlit this insane attack over all of Israel, coming in uh, over over numerous countries. And so we're in a situation now where, uh, where I've said this before, Logan, America has become this administration, and therefore the United States of America is currently a tactical enemy of the state of Israel. And worse than that, or just as bad, recognize Iran already has ICBMs. It does not need ICBMs to reach Israel. We've just seen that, right? Israel's not continents away, but it has intercontinental ballistic missiles in order to reach America. It can reach the heartland of America, and we see they are not afraid to launch their weapons over civilian populations, and they're testing America's metal as well. And what they're seeing is that America is weak and afraid, and America is just wants to appease them. And that's why we have to have the ACLJ there on the ground. We have to have people like you, Jeff, and, and the amazing people that can call in and be a part of this broadcast, can talk to us and give us really an on-the-ground look at what's happening and figure out ways we can take action. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on, about how the ACLJ, have it right here, is doing some really great work. Jeff, hold on. This, you know, can I show you morale patches? You know, the, the military words morale patches? This is a morale patch that the Israelis are wearing all over. This says Messiah, Mashiach. And it's so amazing to the soldiers. They know what they're fighting for. They're, they're fighting a defensive war, not a holy war, a defensive war, but they're doing it in God's name and the Messiah's name. And it's beautiful to see this all over Israel. Thank you, Jeff, so much. I don't think we could have wrap that up any better so please take care be safe uh and we'll keep this conversation going phone lines are completely jammed as we head into this second half hour know that if you're watching on radio or listening on radio some of you guys don't get the full hour live uh join us always each and every day at aclj.org from noon to 1 p.m eastern time you can work out how that is in your local market but 12 to 1 p.m eastern we are live and we broadcast live on aclj.org on youtube on rumble and on Facebook, so you can find us, thousands of you join us, I think we're on X as well now, uh, thousands of you join us live each and every now, this Life and Liberty Drive, it really does affect it. Even just watching on YouTube, watching on Rumble, engaging, commenting, though your donations are very much appreciated, and being the fact that we are a tax day, and it's a tax deductible organization, we appreciate it. But even you guys in- engaging, because what that does, it's specifically on YouTube, it tells YouTube, hey, more people need to see this, and guess what? If you get from the Biden administration that you know that Benjamin Netanyahu needs to take the win because they were able to shoot down the rockets that were raining upon, or, or you know, missiles that were raining upon their country, you need other voices. And more people need to see that, not just like-minded people. And you can do that by subscribing, by liking, by sharing, doing all of that, as well as supporting the work of the ACLJ by going to aclj.org. It is tax day, but your tax-deductible gifts are doubled by amazing ACLJ members. And you can become an ACLJ champion as well, someone who supports the work each and every month on a recurring basis. We'll be right back taking your phone calls in just a moment. The ACLJ fights the battles that matter most to our members. We listen to you, and we're taking action through the ACLJ Life and Liberty Drive. Every dime we receive goes to defend life and liberty from Capitol Hill to Geneva to the United Nations. Now is the time to fight. The rights to life and liberty are the cornerstones of our constitutional republic, but they are under attack. That is why we're proud to announce the return of the ACLJ Life and Liberty Drive. This month, we're redoubling our efforts to beat back the radical left's attacks on your constitutional freedoms and to defend the sanctity of human life, not just here at home, but around the world. Every gift you give will be doubled dollar for dollar, doubling your impact for life and liberty. Go to aclj.org right now and help us. Keeping you informed and engaged, now more than ever, this is Seculo. 
And now your host, Logan Secular. This is Logan Seculo, joined also by Senior Counsel C.C. Heil in studio right now. But we are going to, I want to kick this off actually with a phone call. As so many of you have called in, I want to open up some lines also, so more of you can get your voice on the air. Let's go to Sylvia, who's calling in Indiana on line three. Sylvia, you're on the air. Hi there. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. Thank you for taking my call. <laughs> um, I just want to say that I'm hoping people realize what a liar Biden is. And that when as soon as he said that we stand with Israel, I knew that meant the opposite, that we don't stand with Israel. So I'm not surprised at all that this was his comments um, <laughs> and that this is what he'll do. And so, yeah, I'm just surprised he hasn't thrown in, a, well, well, better luck next time, Iran, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. something like that, because he, he is destroying this nation. And uh, he's got he's I don't know. From November, I don't know if we had a chance or not, and uh, he could destroy us completely before November. So, <laughs> Look, I want you to hear specifically uh, what was said. You, you brought the fact that the Biden administration is not responding uh, correctly and the fact that they are doing stuff like, say, take the win and all of that. Uh, this is from this morning. Uh, this is a conversation between a reporter on CBS this morning and Kirby, and I want you to hear this interchange, and that should set the tone of what's actually going on in this administration. After decades of war via proxies between Iran and Israel, we now have the first direct attack by Iran on Israel, and it follows the U.S. saying to Iran, don't. Well, they did. So what is the state of U.S. influence in the region this morning? I think another way of looking at this is they didn't. I mean, they meant to cause casualties. They meant to to, uh, uh, to cause extensive damage inside Israel, and they didn't. And the reason they didn't was because the United States and partners uh, came to the help to defend Israel. We came to their assistance, uh, and we knocked down just about everything that the Iranians threw up into the sky. Yep, 300 ballistic missiles and drones thrown up into the sky and taken out. Why? I'll give you credit for that because of Israel's Iron Dome and the support from the United States. But to pretend that it didn't happen and say, oh, well, well, another way to look at it as they didn't, it's absurd, and it's why, CC, and we can break this down coming up in the next segment, why the ECLJ is taking action. If you don't know the ECLJ, that is our European Center for Law and Justice, the European wing, essentially, of this organization. Yeah, so just like the Biden administration, the United Nations is doing nothing either. Um, and so we are sending a letter today to the Secretary General of the United Nations um, demanding four things. And basically it is to condemn Iran and to support Israel. Yep, and we'll show that. Uh, obviously, if you're watching on screen, you can see it right now. Uh, and you can probably find it. We'll, we'll figure out a way to post it uh, for those who are watching right now. Uh, we do have some phone lines open, 1-800-684-3110. It's important that we have these arms all over the world. You've heard from ACLJ Jerusalem. Now we're talking about the ECLJ. And, of course, domestically we have the ACLJ. Some of you may be watching go, you know what, Logan, I care about Israel, but it's not my number one topic. Well, what about your own freedom, your own constitutional freedom? We have that wing as well. That arm of the ACLJ is not just here to support Israel in the broad sense or life in the broad sense. We go to the individual, go to you directly. If you have a legal issue, we're here for you. You can just go to aclj.org slash help, fill out information. If it's within our scope of work, you're immediately assigned to an attorney. And we get to work at absolutely no cost to you. That's right. It's at no cost to you. Well, how do you do that? I think it's pretty easy to understand. To do that and to be able to hire the best of the best, whether in the legal field or media, so you can see this broadcast, hear this show. I mean, if you, again, I wish I could turn the camera around and see everybody so you can see how many people work on this broadcast each and every day. We can't do that without your financial support. That's how this works. Sure, we're able to provide incredible free content. We're able to provide incredible free legal help, but not without the funding from ACLJ supporters and ACLJ champions. So right now, I encourage you, go to ACLJ.org. Phone lines are completely jammed right now, but we will take as many of them as we can coming up. Go to ACLJ.org. During this Life and Liberty Drive, again, we are halfway through, so I figured today is a good day to tell you about it. We are 15, you know, 15 days left. We are approaching 21,000 ACLJ champions. And those are amazing figures only that you and God could do. So we appreciate it. We'll be right back with more on Seculo. All right. What is your message to Iran in this moment? Don't. I have one word. Don't. To any actor. 
state or non-state, trying to take advantage of this crisis to attack Israel. Don't. We have just one word. Don't. Let's talk about deterrence, because after decades of war via proxies between Iran and Israel, we now have the first direct attack by Iran on Israel, and it follows the U.S. saying to Iran, don't. Well, they did. So what is the state of U.S. influence in the region this morning? Well, I think uh, another uh, way of looking at this is uh, they didn't. I mean, they meant to cause casualties. They meant to, uh, uh, to cause extensive damage inside Israel, and they didn't. And the reason they didn't was because the United States and partners uh, came to the help to defend Israel. We came to their assistance, uh, and we knocked down just about everything that the Iranians threw up into the sky. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo reacted on X, writing this, So much for don't when your Secretary of State declares near moral equivalence between good, our ally Israel, and evil, the Islamic Republic, you get bad guys wreaking just you now have the Iranians who are violently, violently going after the state of Israel, who seem to have, to have no ability to be checked, and the only response is one word. That's simply not good enough. It is time for the Biden administration to reverse course, to adopt all of the sanctions and all of the policies and all of the posture of the Trump administration because it actually had Israel, uh, it had the Iranians in a box. It had the Middle East in a lot safer place. It had the Israelis and other Arab nations actually moving towards peace in the Middle East. You could have the most powerful, capable military in the world, but if our allies and enemies don't respect or fear you, uh, or respect your capability and will to use it, then, then it's for naught. Welcome back to Secular. We are going to take as many calls as we can, and there are a lot right now, so I really appreciate that. We're going to open up some lines. Uh, we're also going to break down the ECLJ's response currently to the UN. And Cece, why don't you give us a brief understanding of not only uh, why it's important we're there, what it is we're doing, and what this is. You can see it. I'm holding it right now, sure. uh, this letter. And like, and like I say almost every time when we talk about Israel and the United Nations, um, at the United Nations, Israel is the most condemned member state out of all 193 member states. Even though they are basically the bastion of democracy in the Middle East, they get just constant condemnation. So we take our place at the UN under the ECLJ, the European Center for Law and Justice, and we consistently defend them at that international body. So today we are sending a letter to the Secretary General, um, Antonio Guterres. We are sending him a letter basically saying that he must, under the U.N. Charter, he must condemn the actions of um, Iran as open and direct violations of the U.N. Charter. And then he must publicly confirm the um, that it is illegal. What Iran has done is actual, actual illegality and that Israel's right to self-defense is legal response. And then the third thing, we want to urge the Sec uh, Security Council to take effective measures against Israel. And the Security Council is the effective arm of the United Nations, whose mandate is to peacefully resolve international disputes. So they can take action against Iran. And then the fourth thing is to take effective measures to rein in Iran's nuclear um, enrichment program. So we've asked for four direct concrete things that the UN Secretary General should do to condemn I Iran's actions and to um, commend Israel and their right to self-defense. And, and look, you never know what gets through to people, but we're there yes. and we're officially there. I think yes. people understand it's not just us generically sending a letter out and hoping people see it. They have to at least see it. Right. And we were just there just last at the end of last month, mm -hmm. literally making an oral intervention on behalf of Israel as well. So we literally are on the ground. We are not only making written submissions, but we are actually making oral, oral interventions as so well. I understand when you support the work of the ACLJ, it also goes to support incredible work like this. Just imagine, I've even said the cost of just flying, just the travel costs that go into that to make sure people like CC can get there and make these uh, amazing statements. And we're able to, to really get true responses uh, from either the UN or the EU. And we should take a call about that. Michael's calling Online two from Indiana. Second Indiana call today. Indiana's representing Michael. You're on the air. Yeah. Um, hey, I wanted to talk. Uh, President Isaac Herzog. He said that the attack from Iran is a declaration of war. And I had mentioned before with Jordan that 
that I handed a war crimes indictment to General Wesley Clark for bombing Yugoslavia, but General Wesley Clark tried to start World War III. He, they wanted to bomb, carpet bomb Belgrade and kill half a million people in a week. And what Iran did, 300 missiles, that's like totally anti-Semitic. This is like the Fourth Reich to what's emerging. That's why you have NATO attacking Yugoslavia and now the UN with UNRWA and now with Iran are attacking Israel. This is the Fourth Reich that's coming to pass. I mean, it feels and that I, way, Michael. It feels that way. Look, as someone who uh, considers himself an, an American and obviously uh, Jewish in that sense, uh, it, it, I've never felt anything like the last six months in our own country. But I have a feeling in Europe, where it was already a bit more prevalent, I have to say, that there was sort of a underbelly of anti-Semitism that was a little bit more just slightly under the surface. I'm sure that has ramped up, but that's why it's important that we're there. Yeah, absolutely. And it's exactly right that Iran is the head of all of this, that we, you have... You know, Yemen, you have Syria, you have Lebanon, you have the the Arabs in the Gaza Strip and Hamas in the Gaza Strip, Hezbollah in Lebanon. Those are all they're all funded by Iran. So absolutely, it is a declaration of war and Iran has been funding it. And the purpose is to literally eradicate Israel. Yeah, let's go ahead and continue with some phone calls because there are so many of you and I'd love to get to some more uh, coming up in the next segment. Even let's go to Michael, who's calling on line one in one of my favorite places in the state of Florida. Michael, go ahead. Good afternoon, Logan. Hey. Um, I just wanted to say, first off, um, fair winds to my fellow Navy veterans. I actually um, checked into boot camp in Great Lakes, Illinois, 40 years ago today. Wow. Oh, thank you so much for your service in that. Oh, we as Americans, we are so worth it. First thing I want to say, though, is Death to America, if you're chanting that, that's hate speech. Let's call it what it is, straight up. Yeah. Uh, Michael, I was saying this last week. I do feel like there is a – obviously, I'm for the freedom of speech, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm an anti-censorship advocate, I would say. But there is a line of when does it become – and maybe CeCe could tie into this – there is that line of when does it become yelling fire in a crowded theater type situation? And it feels like death to America. And what you'll have is, you know, remember we were doing this um, on college campuses. They said, well, it's not death to in an individual American. Therefore, it's not a hate speech. Therefore, it's not a threat. It's just it's it's too broad right. to, to be hate speech. And you're exactly right. It's all about the definition. Yeah. And they will always, when it's some kind of liberal chant like this, death yeah. to America, they will always say, that it is a broad definition, and so that, it doesn't. I love yeah. that it's uh, you said a liberal cha- like in any other time in society, the chant "death to America" not exactly known for being uh, a liberal thought. I mean, maybe you could have said during the Vietnam War there was a lot of uh, support against the current administration of the government, uh, but "death to America" uh, is is so the fact that the left has gone that far around to where you would say. 20 years ago, he said, well, that is a probably a, you know, a very small group of people who is a, a maybe even ultra right extremist. But no, you have this as something that's very prevalent and they're teaching it to people. Let's teach you how to do a death to America chant as we block the Golden Gate Bridge. Right. Absolutely. And it is it is more of a liberal kind of. Yeah, just, you're right. Wrong. It's common it's not something that we're even too shocked about no. but we should be because it literally is trying to destroy the country that we're living in yeah absolutely let's go ahead and we'll take another call let's go to try to get through the ones coming you guys have been a hold for like 30 minutes 40 minutes and i i appreciate those people so much who call in but i want to make sure that we're actually able to open up some lines to get some more calls so now is the time to start calling because we will take as many as we can coming up in the next segment we're also going to talk a little bit about what's going on in president trump's situation as his trial is, uh, they're starting to pick the juries. So we're going to do that coming up. 1-800-684-3110. Let's go ahead. Uh, let's go to Renee, who's calling in Illinois. Renee, you're on. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing all right, Renee. Thanks for asking. How? Uh, go ahead. Okay, well, I'm going to go to another topic here that no one thinks about. And I lived outside of D.C. in 97 when the Jimmy Carter was president. It was election year. Ronald Reagan took over Hero. We're facing Iran has never liked us. Okay, they're a threat, and they they're playing a game up there with using our artillery and wearing us out, and they're doing it again. And yeah. the 
the uh, miss, the uh, drones that they shot off were all lit up. Hey, hey, what that cost thousands of dollars? While well, we were using missiles to take them down, that were million dollar missiles. Absolutely. I would like to know, and this went on with Katrina. Even we could not get those people off the rooftops because our helicopters were over in the Gulf War. Who is de- our military's being depleted? Our men and women couldn't yeah, uh, serve Renee. because they didn't get their shots. Renee, I don't mean to cut you off. We only got like two minutes here, but you are. You're right in the fact that there are a lot of people who have had issues with the fact that our weapons and our artillery, our stockpile, especially with what happens in Ukraine and what happens in all over the country or all over the world, I'm sorry, uh, really does impact what our future support is. And when you have an ally like Israel needing our help, you want to be able to help. You want to be able to go in and make those those moments. But there are moments. There have been moments in the last few years where we have seen that drop and drop. Um but you have an administration, as we've said, elections have consequences, an administration that will value votes over the safety of American people. And I really feel like that's what this is right now, because you you can't look at this from a factual point of view, the situation in Israel. You can't look at it from a factual point of view and not go, OK, well, here's who we should support. Here's who should we not. Here's who, like you said, Iran has always been a threat to us. Exactly. So who's the, who, whose side do we need to be on? It's pretty clear. But we're in an election year and people are in the streets. And the Golden Gate Bridge is closed right now. We have stopping 100,000 people from crossing it each and every day. A two-mile-long bridge. It's one of our, uh, and I know I'm harping on it because it's like, imagine you can visualize that. When someone says you know, they've, they've blocked off you know, downtown Nashville or they've blocked off uh, even Times Square, you're like, okay, well, how, who does that affect? This is, you think about the Golden Gate Bridge. And a lot of you have probably seen it. A lot of you have probably driven over it. It is one of the, the you know, again, icons. You can see it right now on the screen. Uh, and when you've blocked it to thousands of people, 100,000 plus people that probably travel across, it's nearly two miles. It shows how quickly we have to bow down to people doing this who are going to, uh, I mean, imagine just the cost. You brought up the cost of just a missile. Imagine the cost that is going into the businesses that are already suffering in San Francisco due to the incredible amount of crime. Again, one of the cities, one of our, what was should have been one of the greatest, lightest cities on earth. San Francisco, one of the biggest you could go to in this country, being overrun uh, by all the crises that have hit California, now having its major thoroughfare shut off. Because of why? Because a bunch of people want to support Hamas. And the Biden administration is now weighing, well, how do we still get their votes? Instead of, how do you protect the country? Uh, Phone lines are open a little bit. Some are open. We're going to take as many calls as we can coming up. 1-800-684-3110. Support the work of the ACLJ at ACLJ. Org. A dramatic a escalation of violence in the region. Major break of Celsius if you find the skies uh, of Israel. A wide scale aerial assault is going on right now with waves and waves of drones and missiles streaming in. Iran launching a barrage of more than 300 missiles and attack drones. For the last several minutes, we've seen these flares streaking all across the skies over Jerusalem. The sound of emergency sirens piercing the air, warning people to seek shelter from the ongoing assault. It is significant because we now have multiple fronts in Mideast conflicts. This is no longer just Israel's war with Hamas in Gaza. This is now a state-on-state conflict with Iran itself. This is a severe and dangerous escalation. Our defensive and offensive capabilities are at the highest level of readiness. The IDF has been very clear that most of the drones and missiles were destroyed and intercepted outside Israeli airspace. One Arab Israeli girl was critically injured in an attack in southern Israel. Iran saying that after the attack, the matter can be deemed concluded unless Israel responds with more military action. We do understand there will be an Israeli response to this attack against their territory. The question is what that response might look like and what type of coordination is currently being conducted with the American forces that are operating right now out of the Middle East. We are still on high alert because we realize that we have to retaliate. In our neighborhood, you cannot sit idly by after such aggression coming from Tehran. It will bring more attacks against Israel. So I think in the next few hours, we will have to decide how, when, and where we uh, punch back against the aggression of Iran. Israel will choose its time and place to be able to hit back, and I would expect that hit to be rather explosive. Because Biden's administration has been weak on this, I don't expect it to be immediate, but I expect it to be meaningful.
Welcome back to Secular. We are going to take as many calls as we can in this segment, but I did want Harry Hutchinson to join us for this segment because you may have seen the other big news of the day, which is President Trump, which seems like I'm on repeat, back in court again. And now jury selection, I guess, has started for his campaign finance case that's happening. Maybe give us a little bit of an idea of what that looks like and what it means um, as we're dealing with everything else that's happening around the world. Of course, uh, it feels like a distraction. Absolutely. So um, among the issues that listeners should uh, be aware of is the fact that jury selection commenced today. Uh, According to news reports, jury selection may take up to two weeks. Um, Number two, uh, listeners should note that essentially what we have is a a business record falsification trial, which has now then been converted into a felony Uh, with respect to campaign finance. In New York, for instance, business falsifications are usually misdemeanors. Uh, Number three, here are some of the important questions. This is my favorite part, because we went over this in the prep, and I'm excited for people to hear some of these questions. Here are some of the questions which will be uh, asked of potential jurors. Do you have any political, moral, intellectual, or religious beliefs or opinions which might prevent you from following court instructions. Have you read any of the books by Michael Cohen, a noted perjurer, uh, or Mark Pomeritz? Have you ever considered yourself a supporter or belong to any of the following? QAnon, Proud Boys, Oath Keepers, Three Percenters, Boogaloo, or Antifa? In sum, the judge is looking for people who have just waken up from a coma. Exactly. I think if you look at those, I mean, obviously some of them are extreme, but really that first one is just, do you have an opinion one way or another on President Trump? How would you even find that person who has no feelings at all towards him? You have to find a someone who has never registered to vote, who, uh, you know, maybe you find someone who has been uh, homeschooled and an Amish person who is kept off of television, radio, who has no feelings towards President Trump one way or the other. But the fact that this takes weeks. And look, I was part of a jury selection a, a number of years ago. I know I can't go into the details, but they did ask some of these questions that were like, well, how could anyone qualify uh, for this? But it's part of the process. Uh, but it does take time. And again, slows down more of important stuff that's actually happening. Absolutely. So the judge has basically come up with a list of up to 42 questions per potential juror. So this could take uh, almost forever. This could take a long time. Let's go ahead and take some phone calls. Most of these are on Israel. But, uh, hey, we got one line open. Maybe we'll get to you. We'll try 1-800-684-3110. I'm just going to go in order of which they came in. Let's go first to Mike in D.C. Mike, you're on the air. Oh, well, you're not on the air yet. Now you're on the air. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, how you doing? Thank you for taking the call. Uh, you know, just before you were talking about Israel being attacked. Now, let's just put this in context. It wasn't like Iran came out of nowhere and attacked them. To use the same yardstick, Israel attacked an embassy in Syria, which created this attack on Israel. Are we are we on the same page on that? Uh, you're saying that the original... Now, okay. We can... You can go back, and of course they're going to say that. Iran is going to say that this is a retaliation due to the attack. Now, you can go back before that and say, well, sure, but what happened in October, and who is really to blame for that? So I think we can go back and forth a bit on that and say, this is not a one-to-one situation here. And now you have 300-plus missiles being shot. Again, did they expect it? You're darn right they expected it, because look what happened. 99% of them, more than that, shot down. Because why? Because even us on this broadcast four days ago was saying it's probably going to happen over the weekend. Because this is some weird part of the the, war where it's like, well, we're going to shoot rockets, but we know they're going to shoot them down. And if they shoot them down, then it doesn't escalate, but it makes our people feel good like we responded. You go ahead. Absolutely. So one of the things that we should keep in mind here is that we should expect uh, future retaliations uh, on both sides but it's important to keep in mind that Iran is a major su- supplier of terrorist groups such as Hamas and Hezbollah, which have threatened Israel. Uh, so on October the 6th, 2023, uh, the Middle East was essentially at peace. Then we had October the 7th, 
And now I think it's open season, and I think we sh- are in for a season of retaliation. Yep. All right, let's continue on. Joni's calling on line one from California. Joni, hopefully you're not traveling over the Golden Gate Bridge today. Joni, you're on the air. Yes. I'm. First of all, I'm going to say I'm a liberal, That's okay? Well, uh, second, look, I'm just happy. Hey, I have a question. How would you find our show? Oh, I listen to Fox News and I listen to you guys. I listen to Christian radio oh, most of the time so I can so I can I stabilize that. my thoughts and the reasons for them. And I want to say I'm not a lawyer. I don't have a legal background. I was simply a teacher in the prison system for 25 years, right. but I was a teacher. So I don't have the ability to logically argue any points with you. I'm going to say that up front. Okay. But you said you said liberals are chanting death to America. I want to know what liberal is saying that cuz sure. my whole life I've never seen anybody in the United States, you know, that I hang out with all my liberal friends say yeah. death to America. Oh well, yeah, sure. I maybe it's an overgeneralization that not every liberal. Look, I would say you're probably one of the ones who look, you're you're listening to this show. So first, thank you. You've done a lot just by that, by the fact that you're open to ideas. Let's actually, though, hear from, uh, it, there was, uh, last week we had you on, Dearborn, Michigan. There were protests, with people out front saying death to America, so much so that you had to have a response from the White House. So here's KJP and a reporter going back and forth specifically about these protests chanting death to America. A couple days ago in Dearborn, there were protesters chanting death to America and death to Israel. Does the president condemn that? Yes. Is the president at all concerned that Dearborn is becoming, is facing a risk uh, of becoming a hotbed of any sort of homegrown threats? I, I, I don't have any uh, intelligence to share with you on that. Obviously, that's something that we're always very vig- vigilant uh, about, but don't have any national intelligence to, to share with you. And then, but obviously, we will condemn any any uh, violent rhetoric. Which, which we Very have. nice of her to condemn violent rhetoric. Let's continue on and take some more phone calls. Let's go to Todd, who's calling in Georgia online, too. Todd, you're on the air. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Uh, my question is, uh, with Russia having fighter jets and troops in Syria, are you aware of any kind of uh, mutual defense agreements between Putin and uh, the terrorist in Tehran? Here you go ahead. I mean, there's obviously some friendship there. There is a ton of friendship between Russia and Iran. Iran has been very helpful to Russia in Ukraine. Um, And I think Russia, uh, when it comes to the United Nations, would protect Iran from a U.N. Security Council resolution. Um, And so I think at the end of the day, Russia will look to protect its supplier of weaponry. I think... Um, Iranian drones have helped turn the tide in Ukraine. I think that's absolutely right. All right, thank you guys for tuning in today. I am going to encourage you right now to support the work of the ACLJ halfway through with our Life and Liberty Drive. Annabelle and John, I am sorry I didn't get to you today. We just ran out of time. Look, I have to say, you all showed up today for me. When I was flying solo here, you showed up and you gave me a call, and I appreciate that. We couldn't do this amazing broadcast each and every day, provide the incredible free content, and, of course, the incredible, amazing legal work that you've heard now today that goes around the globe. We couldn't do it without you right now. We're continuing this battle. We're continuing the fights. You can be a part of it right now. It's tax day, but your tax-deductible gifts are doubled during our Life and Liberty Drive. Halfway through with it, go to aclj.org to make that donation. We'll be back tomorrow with a whole other hour. So if you're brand new, hit that subscribe button on YouTube and on Rumble. Talk to you then.